five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Look at that, that's New York City, and that's where we're doing our program from. And we'll be here until midnight, Eastern Time. Hello everybody, how are you? Alex Bennett, here I am, I'm uh, all piss and vinegar and ready to go, and um, I wasn't going to do a show tonight. Um... I'll explain why I am doing one tonight in just a moment. Let me just blow my nose. You know, I've been blowing my nose constantly. I had a cold. Started Thanksgiving Day, I think it was. And this cold just kept going and going and going. And to this day, I, would, I wake up in the morning. I got a little bit of it. This morning I was, I had, uh, I was hoarse, and then it cleared up. <clears throat> but I'm still a little gargly. But this cold just went on and on and on and on. And I, you know, I was fighting it like crazy. But I guess we're okay now. We're getting there. I, in another day or two, I probably should be able to get up and tell you, hey, I don't have a cold anymore. I, you know, I used to be, I used to get colds when I was younger. And I would get a cold on the first day. Okay, let me just uh, uh, even this out. There we go. Uh, yeah, um, what can I say? I want everything to be just right for you folks out there. Uh, uh, I, I used to get a cold on uh, the first day. Uh, I would feel it coming on. Then the next day, the cold would like be really horrible. And on the third day, it would start going away. And by the fourth day, I didn't have a cold anymore. That was my colds, okay? Now I get a cold, and this one went on, as I say, starting in, on Thanksgiving Day, and working its way to right now, I'm better, but not completely better. So, anyway, here's to you. I'm having coffee. Probably keep me up tonight. No, it won't because I'll take my uh, my happy pills, and they put me to sleep. But then I wake up the next morning and I'm groggy. But you see, they don't mind giving you groggy pills when you're my age because they figure, eh, you know, you don't have much to do, do you? You know. No, I only have a show here to do where I have to tell people about the world around us and engage them in uh, in uh, in discussion. Okay. So, anyway, uh, let me uh, tell you why I'm here tonight and uh, why I, I was going to take tonight off and I was going to take uh, I was going to take uh, Tuesday night off, um, uh, and the reason why was because of our trial, as you know. For the last many years, there has been a, a thing going on with this apartment that we live in, and it goes on and on and on. Let me explain it to you a little bit <clears throat> in case you aren't up to date on it and you want to know what, what it's about and you're just tuning in for the first time. If you've heard this before, go somewhere else. I don't know what there is to listen to. Uh, and uh, then come back and see me in about a half hour because I'm going to have to explain. Well, I'm going to tell why I'm, not, why I'm here tonight. Anyway, uh, uh, we rented this apartment from a guy, okay? And we started paying him rent every month, 4200 bucks a month. And then about three years in, uh, the landlord says, hey, you have people illegally living in your apartment, and uh, they must be thrown out, otherwise we're throwing you out. It was, a, it was called a, a notice to cure. Boy, they come up with terms, don't they? I wish that would happen with my prostate cancer. Notice to cure. All right. Anyway. So um, then about two months later, he gets another thing from them saying, well, you know, we're evicting you as well. So go. All right. So now this whole thing blows up. One thing leads to another. He says to me, you got to leave. We want you to leave when your lease is up in August. And this was like April. And I said, we're not going anywhere. I said, uh, <clears throat> we have the expectation of renewal because we've been good tenants and we paid you every month. And uh, uh, now you're throwing us to the wolves because you can't defend this thing. 
So um, he said, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're not going. I'm going to have to go to my lawyers. And I said, well, we'll find some ourselves. And we went and found ourselves a lawyer. And uh, Marjorie and I went into this lawyer, and we told him what was up. <clears throat> he looked at the situation, looked back at us, and he said, eh, it's illusory tenancy. I said, what? What's illusory tenancy? He says, well, that's a law whereby if you, if you don't actually live in the place, but you lease it out, and it's rent-stabilized, uh, uh, this fan isn't going on. Why? I guess I got to... Huh? What? What's? Oh, don't tell me. Oh, there we go. There we go. This. It, what it is is I think I need a new. I need a new uh, thing in here. Yeah, I need a new thing. Anyway, your battery. Anyway, they said uh, illusory tenancy is when a guy doesn't actually live in the apartment and he then sublets it, or rather than sublets it, just leases it out. Now under. Uh, the law, you can't do that, all right? So then he said, well, what are, what are the papers you have? And we showed it to him, and it was a lease. It wasn't a sublet. And he said, uh, this is the illusory tenancy. He was overcharging you and everything. He said, because if it was a sublet, he could only charge you uh, what he was paying for the apartment. And if it were came furnished, 10%, all right? But otherwise, uh, you're entitled to all your money back, all the difference between what he was paying and what you were paying, plus, uh, pl uh, plus double damages over that. So treble damages total. And plus, you know, he has to pay a lot of other things, too. We went, Marjorie and I looked at each other. We're going, you know, we were expecting we're going to go in there. And he goes, well, you know, there's not much, much we can do. You better just get the hell out of there. He said, no. Nah. Don't get out of there. Stay there. And don't, I said, what about paying him rent? And he said, I wouldn't send him another penny. I said, then we won't be paying rent. Do we need to, like, save it up? And he said, only if you want to. He said, there's no reason to. And that was it. We left that place high-fiving each other. That was, let's see, April of 11, 12, 12 13, 14. Uh, uh, April of uh, 2014. What is it now? <laughs> what is it now? Uh -huh. Let's see here. We, 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 we got in there on the 11th, so 11 is one year. 11, 12, 13. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's since uh, 2013. That could be two. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. 2013. So that's how many years? That's at least six years more at plus t plus change. And it's just been one little legal battle after another. And now $68,000 later, because that's how much we've spent on legal expenses, we're finally at the point where we were supposed to go to trial. So a couple of months ago, we were supposed to go to trial. And I don't know, one of the lawyers his mother was sick and he had to take her to the hospital or something so we had to postpone it to this week and this was going to be the trial monday tuesday and wednesday they figure it's going to take that long you know if this were a murder trial it might be shorter but you know <clears throat> i really should have committed murder then it would have been simpler and the lawyer's fees wouldn't be as bad anyway we um uh so I get ready for this, right, for the trial, as for, for this trial. So they moved it up, and they moved it to these three days, okay? So that's why I took Tuesday and Wednesday off. It's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but we're not on Mondays. And uh, I, uh, I, I was ready to go, ready to do it, ready to be, uh, ready to fight the good fight. We go down to 60 Center Street, which is the office building, the federal office building. That's where the court is. It's in federal court. And, uh, or is that Supreme Court? I can't remember. It's, I think it's federal court. Eh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we go in there, and my lawyer is talking with the other lawyers, with the judge at the table, and they're arguing back and forth about stuff and trying to make their case because the judge is trying to settle it. 
okay, rather than have it go to trial. So he's, as a judge, trying to sit there and, and adjudicate it and, you know, I mean, and, and just force the parties to come together. Um, and uh, after that, my lawyer comes to us and says, I think we, got, I think we did pretty well there. You know, we did very well in that uh, go round. You know, but nobody's giving. So uh, the, he then says, "Oh, the judge wants to see each of the parties in his chambers." So I guess he wanted to see him in his chambers to get an idea of who wanted what and who was willing to give how much, so it didn't have to go to trial. Because he's trying like crazy not to go to trial. Uh, you know, usually people want to work. Uh, but he doesn't want to. He, he he would rather not have to sit there and listen to this stupid case about some people with an apartment, and two of them being Alta uh, if he doesn't have to. So um, we then go in, and all of a sudden, it is this woman who is the judge's assistant, and she just does all the, the talking, and she's really adversarial. Okay, she's going, ah, you're never going to prove illusory tendency, and you're never going to be able to do this, you're never going to be able to do that, and it, you know, if I were you, I would settle right now, you know, if this goes to court, you, you know. well, my, my lawyer knows illusory tendency, he knows tendency law, he sleeps tendency law, okay, and she doesn't, uh, admittedly, she's probably a good law assistant, but her look at the law is very general, and she doesn't know this area of uh, of, uh, of uh, um, uh, what do you call it, residential law or whatever. And uh, so uh, she's trying to, he, uh, he uh, later on he said all he was trying to do was scare us, okay, because she was trying to work with the judge to you know, kind of get some answer to the situation. And uh, oh, it's funny. The judge... Uh, the judge says to me, so, Mr. Schwarzman, uh, do you work? I said, no, I'm kind of retired. I said, I do a podcast. I said, what did you, he said, what did you used to do? I said, oh, I was in broadcasting. He said, well, anywhere I would know. I said, well, Sirius XM for about uh, nine years. And he said, oh. And he said, anything else? I said, oh, yeah, early on, uh, WMCA and WPLJ here in New York. He says, were you one of the good guys? And I said, <clears throat> Yeah, I was. I was one of the good guys. And he says, oh, oh. I said, in fact, I was the last good guy. I says, oh, great. I remember the good guys. Hell, you know. So anyway, he's trying to kind of not be as nasty as his assistant because it's good cop, bad cop. And what they're still trying to do is to get somebody to cave and fold and whatever, okay? So he says, what kind of rent do you want? And I said, oh, I don't know. At 1500 a month, something like that. He says, how about 2250 I said, we could talk about it, you know. And uh, uh, that was about it. And then we all went out, okay? Now, <laughs> the guy who owned this apartment was asking for $300,000, $300, and he would go away, okay? And uh, that's what he was asking for. Now we get we get um, out there, and he looks at me and he uh, and, and Marjorie, and says, "Would you go for twenty two fifty?" And and um, Marjorie goes, and I says, "Yes, we would." And I said, "I don't know. I'd be happy with fifteen hundred. I'm just trying to make a deal here, you know. I, if I can get the apartment for fifteen hundred, great. If I can't, I'll take it at twenty two fifty. I mean, after all, I mean, look at what we got. All right." Uh, so our lawyer says, well, we'll have to discuss this later on. But it looked like we would kind of cave and fold in that area. They go, I don't know if they asked the, uh, the um, landlords if they would give on anything. But then they go over to our, the guy who rented us the apartment, and they say to you know, him, well, how much do you want? And they had just heard him say th everywhere three hundred thousand dollars. He goes, "I want three hundred and fifty thousand dollars." And my lawyer goes, "Our deal doesn't sound so bad right now, you know." Anyway, uh, all of a sudden he jumped from three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand, and he doesn't even really have a case. Okay, 
And uh, I don't even think his lawyer was happy with him uh, suddenly changing the amount, okay? Uh, and so uh, the judge said, I guess we can't do anything. We'll have to go to trial. So now it's trial time. It's setting another trial date. And this one is, gee, I'm, I, I'm forgetting when these dates are. Uh, but this one's going to take me out of here for about four days uh, because they're going to do a Friday morning and then they're going to do a, I don't know, what is it? I, I don't even remember here. Uh, a Friday morning, let's see here, trial, trial. Where's the trial? Oh, there it is. Friday morning, uh, a Wednesday morning, a Thursday morning, and a, uh, excuse me, a Thursday a Friday and a Saturday, uh, excuse me, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of the next week, which would take me out of here all those days. In fact, it would take me out the first day. It might not take me out the last day because I could still do a show. But anyway, it's just, I may have to take the whole week off. Uh, and, and it's going to cost us, you think we spent $68,000 and that's a lot of money? Guess how much it's going to wind up ending here? You know, and we probably won't get our money back because their attitude is, hey, lawyer's fees. Uh, well, that was your rent for the last couple of years. So we're going to sit around owing something like, I don't know, $50,000, something like that. Uh, it, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And the thing that's amazing about this to me is how slow the process is and, and how un- giving they are to people like Marjorie and I. You know, uh, I'm a now a senior. I'll use that as an excuse. I'm about to turn 80. I'll be 80 next week on Thursday, okay? If I make it, because I may get a death sentence on Monday uh, when I see the oncologist. Uh, so I may not live through till Thursday, but I, I think I will make it to 80, okay? And Marjorie is, uh, well, I won't say how old she is, but she's just a few years younger than I am. And, uh, it, it, you know, what's happened here is that uh, uh, we, uh, I'm on a fixed income, and she is working, but, gee, I don't want to have to see her keep working. She's slaving away. I mean, she's done a wonderful thing of keeping money coming into this place. Uh, I'm not as good at it. I'm, a, I'm an asshole when it comes to it, you know. So. Uh, I just don't have the ability anymore, you know. I keep thinking, hey, how can I make some money? And I'm going, voiceovers, I don't think I got a, a, an edge on that one. Uh, how about teaching? I don't know anywhere I could teach. You know, so I, I, you know, I have nothing to teach. All I can teach is radio, and that doesn't exist any longer. If I, if I give a bunch of kids a lesson on how to do radio, they're going to wind up doing radio that doesn't exist any longer. So I may as well let somebody else handle that and tell them how they can, you know, uh, voice track a radio show or something like that. But, you know, so we don't have a lot of money, you know, and we're going to be $50,000 in debt, which Marjorie will be paying off because it's on, on her apartment. Uh, which, you know, I mean, okay, so we have to pay it off, you know. But uh, we, you know, we just, we just have, it, it, it's gone on and on and on and cost us a ton of money every time, every time somebody does something that puts a, uh, I'll give you an example. The, the, the prick who, who was our landlord, let me call him the prick, okay. He, at one point, decided that he wanted a summary judgment well, a summary judgment is he just said, well, we think that there's enough evidence here that the judge can make a, uh, a decision. So they threw it in front of a judge. And what we had to throw at him were all kinds of papers and that and this and that. It was the most expensive part of this process that we've had so far. We had he, Our guy worked on a document explaining the entire, the entire case and why we should win it. Uh, and it cost us $12,000, all right? So it was very expensive. And just because this prick decided he wanted a summary judgment, which he never got, 
okay? And, and any good lawyer, including his own, I would imagine, would tell him that he wouldn't get it. But, you know, he even goes against his lawyer's judgment on things. He's just, I want $350,000, but you just said you wanted $300,000. What changed, you know? The cost of your shoes? What, you know? By the way, the funny part about him knowing me or not knowing me or knowing the good guys at WMCA and being somewhat, somewhat impressed by that, we go back out and he's impressed by the fact that the guy who was our landlord was a, he wasn't a famous basketball player, but he played for the Knicks for like two years. And he was impressed by that. Nick player for two years. I had a Nick player in my court. The guy never amounted to anything. He went over to Europe to work for European basketball teams. And then he came back and he did something in the basketball union and whatever. But, you know, pretty much a failure. Anyway, <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, so, so here we are. I took the day off yesterday just because I felt like it and because I was just emotionally exhausted from this whole thing. And I'm still emotionally exhausted from it. But, you know, what the hell? <clears throat> Life goes on. Obla de obla fucking da. You know, so I, uh, but I just think that, that there should be accommodations for people like ourselves who don't have deep pockets, you know, who are entering our, our years of retirement and, and can't afford this. I mean, a judge should say, hey, these people can't afford this. Let's make a deal with them, you know. Anyway, it's just, you know, the, the landlord's willing to give us the apartment for twenty two fifty, but the landlord's not willing to give him $350,000 to go away. Uh, and they're willing to go to a, 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 you know, a, court, a, court case, a court case about it, which if he prevails, which he could, is only going to get him about fifty grand, which is less than he paid for his lawyers and all of this. And if he hadn't done that stupid uh, summary judgment thing way back when, he probably wouldn't have spent as much money. But thank you very much. You cost us a ton of money, you fucking prick. So uh, I've gotten an idea of what the judiciary is all about. This judge is fine. He's a nice enough guy. His assistant we don't like because she was kind of mean to us. But she... You know, she was she was playing the bad cop to his good cop. And they what they were trying to seek was a settlement. Our lawyer wrote me, I said, boy, you know, at the thing, she looked at us, she said, well, this could go two ways. You guys could lose the apartment and be thrown out of there. And on the other hand, uh, uh, the other guy uh, could come out of this with nothing. And you get the apartment. And we kind of felt bad about that, and we asked afterwards, you know, was is is that a, is that a possibility? And um, uh, the reply from our lawyer was, she was only doing that because she was trying to get us to cave. So she, they were trying to get both parties, all the parties, to cave, so that it would be, uh, uh, you know, we wouldn't have to go to trial. And I said, I appreciate that. You know, I really do appreciate that. So anyway. That's our uh, that's our long story of what went on, and I bet nobody's even interested, right? No, not very many people heard it, so not very many people are going to know what went on, okay? So fuck them, right? We'll just keep it between us. If there's anybody you know who normally listens to this show and didn't listen to it tonight and said, well, what happened to Alex in his court case, don't tell them, okay? Just leave it at that. Because we only have like, uh, let's see, 21 people listening right now on the TV. What's on the audio? How many people on the audio? Let's see here. How many people on the audio? Oh, 11. Well, I said I wasn't going to be on tonight, and I went on my Facebook page, and I said I would be on. Uh, and nobody ever pays attention to anything I write or say. Uh, and uh, consequently, um, for instance, last night I'm listening to Jack Bishop's show, and Jack is saying Alex won't be on tomorrow night because he's got the court trial. I sent him a fucking email a day earlier, and uh, it was uh, uh, he never. I guess he doesn't check his email. Yeah, 
But anyway, let's get going with some of our callers here. We, I didn't even turn the phone on, but she saw that I was uh, on somehow. Let me see here. Let me get. Let me go here. Wait a minute. I'm trying to find. Uh, uh, oh well. It looks I, trippy. Hmm. It looks trippy. It looks like a 3D background. Uh, oh, 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 oh! I, I, I got to tell you about that. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, get this here. Let me see here. Do we have? Um, uh, let me see here. Bob Kazoo. There we go. There she is. There is Kathleen, ladies and gentlemen, better known as Schmoody. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, no, my blurry background? Yeah. That's because with my camera that you see, not the one that's on the air, but the camera you see, you can blur your background. You probably can, too, if you go up to uh, uh, preferences and then you go over to audio video, uh, audio video and uh, then you will see that you can actually click a button that says blur background. Hmm? Why'd you do that? What are you doing that for? Because it's too much to do. What do you mean it's too much to do? And my background is boring anyway, so why blur it? So it gets less boring? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, really, like, nobody reads your stuff? I was off-ended. Offended. Offended about what? Contrary to popular belief, blondes can read. Blondes can read. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Wait a minute. Where, where, where is my? I'm looking for the thing where I can turn on my uh, my Skype. Um, my actual uh, preferences. No, it's not preferences. No, it's not there. I'm trying to see. I I, I didn't turn on my uh, uh, my uh, my thing saying that I'm active. And so, therefore, it's a kitty. Can you see the kitty? I see the kitty. Was that the kitty the by the fire. Wow, that isn't that isn't that uh, idyllic? Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm trying to figure out where where, where my. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to. I want to say that I'm active, and I'm not. Uh, I don't have. Uh, I can't find it. Oh well. This is, uh, let me see here. Oh, well, what, what are you doing? Are oh, you throwing stuff at your son? Yeah, but there's a big pillar in the way, and so he's laughing at me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. I'm just trying to trying to say that I'm on, and I can't um, I can't find the thing at, at all that, that uh, allows me to do it, because I used to be able to do it just by, uh, let me see here. Oh, there we go. I found it. Okay, active. Okay, now we're active, I guess. Are you wait, making wait. toast? Yeah, we're active. Sure, jack wagon. Okay, we're active. All right, now we're fine. But anyway, will anybody else call? That's the question. Maybe they didn't get the memo along with Jack, but I put it up on my Facebook page. I saw it. Yeah, you know. And I decided to do a show tonight because... I would I would be lying if I did two nights saying, oh, I got my trial. You know? Well, I saw last night that you said you weren't going to do a show, and I was like, well, he said he wasn't going to do a show. Yeah, yeah. So that was last night. But then tonight, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, uh, I guess nobody, nobody thought that I was doing a show tonight. So let me ask you something. Yeah. Do I need to send Vinny and Louie Catigliano? To the uh, owner of your uh, apartment? What do you mean? To break his legs? Yes. Oh, uh, no. no. I know. I'm kidding. No, no. Uh, I would say if you have to hurt him a little. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. Now Charlie Wallace isn't isn't coming in here. Oh, boo. What is wrong? Don't tell me I've got this problem again. Oh, it's because you blurred your back. Wait a minute. Oh, there he is. There he is. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, I was having a little trouble getting you in uh, there. For yeah, a so. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> but you know, uh, they probably upgraded uh, the system again. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Every time they upgrade the system, this happens. You know? Yeah. Anyway. Hey, so how many square feet is your apartment? Twenty-five hundred. Nice. That's again. bigger than my house. Wow. Oh. And for like. 15 to 2250 
I mean, houses here, I can rent my house out and it's only 2100 I can rent my house out for 2700 a month. Marjorie rents out a very small apartment, okay, which she owns, okay? Uh, and, and that she, uh, she um, charges a rent of 2300 a month. Nice. So, you know, I know that's a bargain. Why don't I try for a bigger bargain by saying fifteen hundred? Right? I'm just bargaining. Exactly. You know, if they're going to play good cop, bad cop, I'm going to play good cop, bad cop. Right? So. Exactly. So you know, I, I'm, it's uh, but it's just it goes on and on and on, and I mean, after it's all over, we're going to have a hell of a bill. You know, yeah. for the lawyer, which we're going to have to pay off. It'll take us years to pay it off. You know, and 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 why? We didn't do anything. Right. You know, we just had to sat here with our fingers up our ass thinking we had an apartment, you know? And then all of a sudden all you this crap how, happens. My parents, you know my parents' property. Yeah. And so um since you have been there, they've added another garage with like an atrium. And they have full solar, so they're off the grid, and they, they're they on a well, so they're off the city plumbing. And their payment is 1700 bucks a month. Mm. And that is only for the property tax. The property tax is that high? Well, I mean, you're in California, sitting on five acres, okay. overlooking the ocean. I mean... But you know what? I'll take the house for seventeen hundred bucks a month. Oh yeah, no, that's fine. You know, I mean, yep. What the hell? Exactly. So is your father going to? What I'm going to do is I'm going to dump some money into this house, rent it out, and probably end up in Guadalajara. Why not? And exactly. I'm sure your father would be happy if you lived up there with him. Yes. You know, and then you wouldn't even be paying rent at all. No. Yeah. You know. No. So uh, and there's and, a and huge the way, garden and and I and he goes yeah and but, I mean prior to my mom's passing both my mom and my dad said oh yeah if you want chickens you can have chickens maybe two or three yeah you know and we have a the garden is massive and it's all fenced in and covered yeah well you should see the pot plants my parents grew three years ago oh really good for them <laughs> yeah well you know what when my mom got um my mom had tremors. And my brother, Mike, mm -hmm. who works for ILM, he has tremors, and so does my niece, Raven, yeah. who is, is Eric he, is he still Is he still at ILM? Yes, he's working on he's working on The Mandalorian. Oh, wow. Beautiful mm. work on that show. Yes. Wow. So um, my mom had the tremors, so her doctor said, well, why don't you try CBD oil? So she was on C CBD oil. Then she got breast cancer, and they said what saved her from the the cancer metastasizing was the CBD oil. Well, I don't know. I I question. Well, she had it for two years, and they didn't know it. Yeah, I just I just question whether it's you know whether the CBD really is that uh, uh, efficacious. Is that a good word? Did I just use a yes. good word? Did I use I a like good it. word? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know the, you know the king's English? I sure hope he is. Thank you. <laughs> My the Halsteads uh, immigrated from Yorkshire, England, and landed in New York in 1640. Caleb Halstead and Rebecca Ogden. Really? So I have my family tree going back to 1100. Mm, wow! Wow! I mean, I would love to live in High Halstead, Lancashire. Yeah. Here's, oh, by the way, I, you know, on this thing with Ancestry.com and those two people named Marino, who's supposedly yeah. my brother and sister. Yeah. Somehow it's really wrong because when you look at them, they were the children of my mother, Ruth, and they right. were born in Spain or... Oh. I don't know something. Something about them being born in Spain or the parents born in Spain. There's some somebody put that in somewhere, and it it, yeah. it managed to get into our our thing. But uh, you know, I got off of Ancestry. I was on Ancestry, and I um, ended up grabbing my tree. Yeah. 
and and getting out of there. Well, let's get back to your parents' place. Um, lovely place, by the way. Uh, and a home that they built themselves. They designed it. And they My designed, dad designed they, it. They designed it for them. It's a kind of yeah. house somebody said to me, I think they said to me, this is going to have very low resale value because we built it for us, not for somebody else. <laughs> you know? Uh, and and uh, there are people I know who have done that, and they understand that if you build something for yourself, you're going to have a hard time getting rid of it because... Well, they'll probably get... I mean, once my dad passes, we will probably get $10 million, I don't know how much, because it's there on the Mendocino Coast. Yeah, mm. yeah. But he... They... Um, uh, it was a, it's a wonderful it's three stories if you count the basement yeah and the basement is only half of the uh, whole the whole house but it's got a staircase it's got a full hydraulic elevator it, that goes down to the basement yeah yeah goes, they, they yep, put in a hydraulic so you walk, it, it, when you walk it, in you're on the main floor Charlie check this out they put an elevator in and I said who puts an elevator in their house? And he yep. said, your father said to me, you know, we expect to live here till we die. Yep. And one day we're going to be too old to walk these yep. stairs and we're yep. going to be happy we have an elevator. Yes. Did they finally get to the point where they had to use that elevator? Well, what happened is my mom had had back surgery and she was fine and dandy and she had a couple more. And then she had one that went awry mm -hmm. and she was pretty much wheelchair bound. Because I remember my dad folding out the design in our dining room table in Fremont and us kids going, geez, dad, an elevator, how pretentious. And he looked <laughs> at us because he was a structural engineer and he said, you never know what could happen. This is where we're going to retire and this is where we'd like to die. And boy, what, when my mom had that surgery and she came home, we said, holy shit, dad, good call. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a very good call, and yeah. and and uh, I think a, a good decision and an expensive decision. You don't the elevators don't come cheap, yeah. you know. But my parents were very good. They were very frugal, even though there were six of us kids. I think if I my remember correct, I think I remember correctly when I went there, and at the time that I yeah. went there, I was in my what early fifties, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, I took the elevator. <laughs> That's how was lazy fun. I was. I mean, I remember when I had Sean. I had Sean, and it, and so I was. My mom was here with me, mm -hmm. and um, then we went up to Guala, and I was up there for two weeks. And my parents insisted that I take the, the elevator, which was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a. It's a beautiful home, uh, just yeah. a beautiful home, and a very nice, uh, nice area. Here's the story, uh, and I'm sure you'll appreciate this, Charlie. Mm -hmm. she has me go up there with her and we drive it I think in, in, in uh, late at night we drive it and it was before the house was finished was the first time we went, we went up there yeah yeah before the house was finished oh, wait a minute let me get Tony on here and I heard you said you, you, your mom has people in Spain Alex <laughs> no, no, no 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 forget that it's, 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 <laughs> you said that was a mistake no it's a mistake Anyway, we're talking about a big mistake on uh, on uh, yeah. uh, ancestry. Ancestry. Anyway, uh, so we're we're driving up there at night, and I had my uh, my uh, Acura with the GPS. In those days, when yes. you had a GPS, in your, when you had a GPS in a car, you had something special because nobody had GPSs in their car. Mm -hmm. And the road going up there is—I'm not kidding you—like this. It's yeah. the highway. Mm -hmm. It's the highway. And there's an ocean on one side, by the way. And, you know. And Sheer it, cliffs on one yeah, side yeah, and mountains yeah, on the yeah. other. Yeah. And it's, you know, yeah, and we're doing this at night. Well, because I had the GPS, she was sitting there going, curve coming up. <laughs> really? Yoko. <laughs> you, you, you were, you, no, not Yoko wasn't saying that. We called our woman Yoko because she actually oh, yeah. had a Japanese accent. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 And and and, boop, boop, boop. and and you're you're giving me literally turn next curve coming up. Yeah. Curve coming uh -huh. up. Curve coming up. You know. And yeah. you we we got, I don't know how many curves we had to make. I was getting nauseous. You know. <laughs> but that was the biggest windy road I've ever been on in my yes. life. You know. 
They couldn't maybe run a straight line? I don't know. No. Some kind of drunk well, you engineer. Know what? Once I go, now what I do is, once I come out of Jenner, you go along the windy roads, and there's this one turnoff, and you go up and over the hills, and that's what I take now. And it's not windy. It's up and over the hills, and it drops you down by Timber Cove. And after that, it's a straight shot to so Sea it, Ranch it, and to Gualala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's, it's a it's a beautiful place, and uh, yeah. you're lucky to have it. You know. Yeah. You know, and it's seventeen hundred dollars a month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it's all paid yep. for, right? It's all paid for. It's all paid for. I mean, my parents built the house, I think, for like two hundred and fifty grand. So they bought the land. They bought the two acres for $250,000. Two hundred fifty thousand. What happened is, when we were kids, my parents used to take us up there, and we used to go abalone diving. So they got to know the people in town, and then they bought the two acres. So then they move up there and they build the house. And then there was the other three acres next door. And I guess my dad made a offer that people couldn't refuse. And he bought the other three acres. So now it sits on five acres. And it's you know, all it's nice. Ocean nobody views. can build around you, too. Your dad was smart because nobody yeah. could build around his house. Wait nope. Minute. Wait a minute. I got to change something here. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, I lost. Um, um, uh, uh, Kathleen and, and Tony wound up in her place. So let me go back okay. to her there. Okay. Are Come you on. sick, Tony? I got a little cold, I think. Oh, oh, boy, you got what I got. It was 60 degrees yesterday. I went to the store to get my mother her medicine. I said, it's hot. I came back. She said, what's the matter? Yeah. It's like 60 out there, I said. That's summer or spring. I was like, yeah. 60 uh -huh. is 44 here. It was, it was, six, like it was 60. Yeah, was no, like, it was oh day before God. yesterday, it was 60. Then last night it went down to yeah. in, into the 30s and it snowed. Yeah, I woke up this morning. I look out the window. It was I, oh, it looks nice. It snowed overnight. I look nice, and I'm oh, looking man, at the trees. I, wish it I was like, snow. Snowed. You're right. And then 60 degrees. It was crazy the last two days. Yeah. yeah. I work in a warehouse that is constantly 30 degrees. Oh, I had that. Oh God, mine was even. They were so cheap in my place. They used to turn the heat off on, so I used to turn it back on. He he worked at a place that was cold, really cold in the winter, really hot in the summer. Oh, uh, hot wasn't the word. I drank so much water in that place. It was like a hundred degrees. I'm in good shape. Well, so, you, but you should you should have turned them. You should have turned them in. You should have turned them into the city. You know the employee. No, I should have turned them into the labor board. I might yeah. have had a case. I think. Yeah. I this actually looked at the staircase one time. I said, I just fake an injury. I might be able to sue my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> This is Costco chill breeze. Make a fall, he said. Just lay on the bottom. <laughs> so it's the Costco that gets all the meat, chicken, all the produce. So we're constantly at a 30 degree. Yeah. Wow. Why is it? Can I ask you a question about Costco? Yes. Why is it their meat has gotten so expensive? Oh, got more? Oh, it's just brutally expensive. I like expensive. the pot pies and, there, and, 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 well, we don't have the pot pies at ours. Oh, you don't have them at all? No, you know, each Costco has you know, different stuff. Once, once, I got to look again. Oh, yeah, each Costco has different stuff. Sometimes they have it and sometimes they don't. And I asked them one, one, once one why we don't. And they said, because we don't have enough requests for it. And you know oh, what? I, like they they made ball. these great meatballs, right? I and, didn't try that. And I love their meatballs. They're not making them anymore. It's the last I mean, month. I can make them. But you just throw them in the sauce and let them cook, right? That's what you put them in? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, Safeway has these meatballs that are so spicy, and I mean, they're in the meat section. I can't handle them. My son, when I put them in my marinara, I won't even touch the marinara, and I let my son, hey, have it all, Sean. Yeah, but have your spicy meatballs. But, but they they did something with the they, they did something with the fucking meatballs. We don't get the meatballs, and some day, some weeks, they I get the uh, what I get. Is I get the Cobb salad, right? Yeah. And then some that. weeks they don't have the Cobb salad. Yeah. They didn't have the yeah. Cobb salad for like two weeks. Fuck you. Give me some consistency, you motherfuckers. But then the meat prices have gone sky high and the quality of the meat has gone hell low. I mean, it's that terrible. That must be in New York. Aren't the, the one in Tracy, cool. man, yeah. everybody raves over and their prices are far lower than Safeway. Mm. Well, I'm sure they're far lower than Safeway, but they're still getting the meat prices. Just gotten out of. Uh, you, okay, let me tell you this. 
I, I, you know, every week I like pick up some strawberries, you know, even if they're a little oh. out of season, they're good right. enough that I can. I do that with the blueberries for my pancakes. Right. Oh, yeah. How much do you think oh. one of the things, they're a two pound, a two pound thing of strawberries they were Eight charging? Bucks? No. Oh, Five ninety nine. Okay, yeah. Oh, usually see, see, during the summer they go for like a buck fifty or two bucks. You know? Stop and Shop has good fruit sometimes on sale for that. What? I go to Stop and Shop for it. Do you have a Stop and Shop? Yeah, we only have one Stop and Shop, and it's all the way Helen gone down at the bottom oh, of the okay. island. Okay, you know. we get it then. So I can walk to mine. We don't have Stop and Shop because we're not as déclassé as you people in Queens. <laughs> I know we have the Stop and Shop. I got yeah. my card. <laughs> and where are you, Tony? Huh? We're, I'm in Queens. I'm actually, Mansbeth is a small suburb of Queens. So I actually, if I wanted to get into the city, I'm in the city in 10 minutes. Wow. I can walk to Queens Boulevard and just jump on the 7. So it's and kind Alex, of you're in Manhattan, right? Yeah, I'm in Manhattan. Manhattan. And what was, where, where were you, those pictures you were showing me? Like, where is it where your aunt lives in the country? Uh, wait a minute, where is this? What picture? Tony. Oh, Tony. Oh, that you know what that was? I showed them pictures. Oh, yeah, you're communicating with him, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I do that with You know what it is? That's right over the bridge in Cresco, New Jersey. It's right over the GW, Alex. Mm -hmm. Cresco, it's only like 30 minutes away. It looks like the country. Maybe totally. 45 minutes. That's about it. And they Tony live on a is, dead end with a brook. Tony is my BFF messenger guy. Yeah. He's really the oh. only guy I'll message with. You know, like long conversations, pictures and stuff. Everybody else, I'm like, meh. Wait till he starts sending you pictures of fucking Scooby-Doo. I oh, he already sent me one. I mean, I Sean might have, and yeah. I love Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh, no, I think she's cackling in the back. I got to check on her. Your mother Who? is cackling oh, in the mother. back? What is she, a it witch? Might, either that or it might be the death death rattle. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> she needs her face. I'm joking. Hold on. No, he's not joking. But, but if she dies, he's got to stuff her. He can't say she's dead. Otherwise, he doesn't keep getting that money from the city. We'll have to ask him if he has a basement with a rocking chair. Yeah. By the way, I'm here tonight, folks. Uh, I, I know you didn't think I was going to be, but you don't have to make me feel bad about that fact. You know. So give me a call. Everybody's in mourning. R really? Why? Because you're, you said you weren't going to be on. Oh, well, no, I'm, you know, I mean, but then I made, I, I abundantly aware, I mean, I put it on my Facebook page, which a lot of people go to, so they know, yeah. you know, they know. Everybody knows except for uh, for Jack Bishop. Jack yeah. Bishop just doesn't know. Last night he's saying, uh, Alex isn't going to be on tomorrow night. And I'm yelling at my fucking computer. I, I sent you a fucking email. Don't you read your emails? You know. And then I, so then I sent him a text today saying I am going to be on and I've gotten no reply from him. So he, he just he's gone into this la la land where unless it's a 1950s comedy of some sort on television, he's not <laughs> aware. You know. Ew. You know, I like to communicate with my people. You know, Damien, right. I think Damien knew it, you know, and he acted appropriately. So. Whatever, you know. Maybe I shouldn't have done a show tonight. I said I wasn't going to, and then I did a show. You know. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Phil, I think, is still coming back from Maui, or he might be back from Maui and think I'm not doing a show tonight, you know. Um, Sean, leave that open. Leave what open? For the cats. What's he doing? Because I have a fire going. You know my family room kitchen is. Is the big. cat is the cat still there? Oh yeah, kitty girl. She's dead asleep. But then there's oh, jingles. Just take, just take, like take your take your, ca take your camera and show us that again because it's so relaxing. Yeah. We could just watch this and then all fall yeah. asleep. Okay. Yeah. Because you know there's nothing that looks more relaxing than a cat. Yeah. Okay. She's like snoozing by the fireplace. Yeah. Yeah. Little bitch. Does she ever go right up to the fireplace and singe your whiskers? Never. None of my cats are like, what the hell is that? I used to have a uh, uh, one of these, you know, these fur. We had a furnace in the basement, and how it uh, um, 
war- That's scary. how it warmed up the living room upstairs in in San Anselmo was by a, a, a heater that gave heat that came up over this grate that was in the uh, in 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 the um, Mm. Uh, the floor of the of the of the living room up, upstairs. Nice. All right. The only problem with it was is great got hecka hot, and sometimes <laughs> it was the middle of the night, and I was walking around barefoot, and I would hit the thing. Shit. And for years, I had grill marks on my feet, you know. But I had a cat, and he loved it because it was heat. Cats love heat, right? But yep. he would he he would sit there with his face over it. What a psycho. And he had his whiskers were completely singed all the time. They were like <laughs> turned into curls and things like that, you know. He was not the brightest cat in the world, but we loved no. him. We loved him, you know. Tonight. Huh? Yeah. Is she out? She had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know what she does now? Oh, she, I can what? say this. What? She comes down oh, you to go to the bathroom, right? I, I don't turn think I'm going to want to hear up. this. I don't think I'm going to want to hear this. I turn to, she's I do. I want to hear it. Come well, on. Okay, so she what, Tony? Turn the water on and leave. I says, Ma, can't you just go without hearing the water? <laughs> I says, this is what I'm going to do when I get all turn the water on. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> what are you going to She's got to turn. I got to hear the. I got to hear the. Now leave. I, I, I'm going to leave. I said. I got to turn the water on. Yeah, it makes me go just in case there's any left. Oh, if I feel like, well, if I feel, I, I tell you what I do. If I feel like I have to shit, I go sit yeah. on the toilet. But then I start doing a crossword puzzle, and because I'm so involved in that, I can't shit. Oh. So then I haven't oh. shit, but I've sat on the toilet for 15 minutes, yeah. and I wonder why I have hemorrhoids. You know, I wonder <laughs> why I have a. a, a, a oh, wow, because you're forgetting to go then. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Sometimes get, I wish my cats would come in and hiss at me. After Say, I get after I after I get my death hiss. sentence on Monday, you know. Oh. <laughs> mm. No, don't say that. I'm just going to a doctor who gives you the correct medicine, which is lots of Thank lots you. of Rankins, lots of radiation. Ugh. Mm. Well, how many treatments do you have to go on? It's a couple of days. I don't know. Here's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay, this guy is the guy who did Rudy Giuliani. Well, he's yeah. in good hands. Then. I guess that. Yeah, one. I don't know. I'm in good hands, or either I'm in hands of a Republican. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> true. But uh, uh, went, oh. and and he, I, I read read on him, and he writes yeah. papers about oh. what they call radioactive seeds. Okay, which they implant in your prostate. They go in there. And they uh, they just dot your whole prostate with these radioactive seeds, okay. Oh, wow. And then uh, uh, you uh, you walk around with them, and after a couple of months, they just completely go dormant, and hopefully, it's had an effect on your uh, on your cancer. All right, uh, and it's supposedly very effective. It supposedly does okay. does work, uh, or at least works most of the time. I'm sure there's a percentage where it doesn't work, and that, of course, will be me. Anyway, um, the that process, if he does it the way they normally do it, is a outpatient procedure. That you go oh. into the hospital, they put you out, they stick those things in your ass, you know, Ooh. in your prostate, in your prostate, and then uh, then they go send you into recovery. And as soon as you don't have any more wooziness, you can get up and go home. And that's it. That's pretty easy, then. Yeah. Takes an hour. Just one visit. Then. Takes an hour. One visit. Yeah. Now that's I might have to good. take some hormones, which are going to make me turn into a woman. But outside of that, uh, if if it's I just this, it'd be fine. You, you know. Together. And you just walk. You just, <laughs> it, it, according, you know, there's some problem with urination, a few little side effects oh. early on with it. But then it it, it pretty much, you know, it, it's not it's not a uh, it's not a big deal. M- most guys return to work in two days. Oh. Yeah, well, I'm trying to take off. You know, so uh, you know, uh, I, I'm thinking that's what he's going to recommend. That uh, I don't know. That's what he's going to recommend. Hell, he might tell me, "Hey, yeah, you've got some bad <laughs> spots here, but you've got enough good spots that we should just wait and see what happens." You know. Oh wow. So uh, that happens too. But uh, since he's an oncologist, I'm sure he's going to want to radiate me. You know, and the only thing I can't do is I can't uh, I can't have sex. 
for about two weeks, mm. and I can't hug a, a I can't come close to a pregnant woman. Really? Or hug children for two months? Because of the radiation? Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm radioactive. So you pretty much got to stay. You got to be pretty much in the house. No. You got to be careful. Though. I'm going out. I want to kill everybody I can come close to. <laughs> you should go visit Phil. <laughs> You imagine see Phil start turning pale. No, it it it, it pretty much remains, remains oh. in, in the area of the prostate, and I'm sure if you had a Geiger counter, you could probably pick it up. But you know, I guess by sticking the Geiger counter up my ass. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, so they must have made pretty big leaps then, right? Would you say with cancer from 30 years ago? I wonder if this was around. Well, the, the, then. This is a, this is a you've got to remember the prostate cancer. In, to begin with, when people talk about cancer, yeah. Um, there's no one cancer, I, you know, and the fact that we say cancer and then we all get, oh, boy, cancer. Well, if if I tell you pancreatic cancer, forget it. Go home, tell your friends uh, yeah. goodbye yeah. and uh, get your your stuff in order. If you've got breast cancer like Kathleen had, uh, they, uh, they <laughs> excuse me, they uh, they uh, put the Lee press ons on. Well, you know what? It's all about catching it early. Yeah, and she caught it early. And yeah, uh, look at her. She, how many years has it been, Kathleen? Twenty forever. 24. I don't know. I was like thirty-two, so like uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three years ago. So yeah. you know, and uh, you gave her a nice pair of jugs. How how much heft did you have at that time <laughs> before you had the cancer? Say what? How much heft did you have before the cancer? I was like a. Uh, 32C, and then I was like, now I'm like a 42D. Yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. Well, she wow. tell him what you did. You went to your doctor, and he said, well, we're, we we it's only in one that we have to do. Yeah. And they said, but we have to do the other one to even it out. What size do you want? And you decided, go big. They said no. Actually, he said he'll make it equal to my height. So I'm six feet tall. Hmm. So that's that's why my and so he are made like, so he crap. made so he made her tits six feet tall. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so my friends say I'm built like a superhero because I body build and I'm in good shape. Yeah, yeah. but I mean it, it 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 you know I mean so you got it's proportionate to my size. Yeah. So one didn't need it, but she couldn't just do one. And well, they could do one to be the same size as the other, but they said as long as we're doing this, how big do you want them? You yeah. Know? And, uh, but anyway, breast cancer is a little less dangerous than a lot of the others. It, it, you catch it early uh, mm -hmm. and all of that, and you're, you're good to go. In fact, I saw a thing tonight on, uh, on the news in which a, a reporter at NBC got uh, breast cancer. Uh, and she noticed it because she had done a story on breast cancer, and they said, breast cancer, you don't always feel a lump. Right. Sometimes you can feel a dent. Okay, oh my God. and and so she said she felt a dent, and she remembered the story she had done. So she immediately went to her doctor, and they found that she had breast cancer, and they didn't seem to treat her by a mastectomy. They treated her by um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not radiation. Um, chemotherapy. Chemotherapy. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, and uh, which amazed me because I usually they just lop them off and that's it and then you don't have to worry well about you it. know what the mastectomy is the halstead mastectomy that was william stewart halstead but you know what apparently it was extremely invasive Ooh, really yes yeah but you know what back in the 1800s i mean come on but most of his patients 80 percent survived well good you know yes exactly yeah today but today uh, today, it's uh, if they catch it early and everything, you're fine. Yeah. Now, prostate cancer, you see, all these cancers are different. Right. Prostate cancer is uh, the second most curable cancer, breast cancer being the most curable, prostate right. cancer being the second most curable. Yeah. And the reason is, is that especially at my age, it's probably confined to the prostate. And uh, uh, they just do some radiation on you, give you some, if, if, if it comes back, they give you the hormones, and that diminishes them because prostate cancer cells uh, diminish on the uh, with the onslaught. They survive off of testosterone, 
So right. if you rob the body of testosterone, the cancer shrinks and dies, believe it or not. So, mm. so if, let's say, it goes out of my prostate and it goes elsewhere mm. in the body, they can treat it through hormones to prevent it from continuing in the rest of my body. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a different cancer than any others. Right. And if you catch it early enough, the reason it's, it's the highest the mortality for men is that a lot of guys just don't know they've got it and they don't pay attention to the warning signs and by the time and they don't see they don't see their doctor as much you know when you're my age and you see a doctor he, every year he gives you a PSA test and right. and it wasn't until recently that my PSA test started jumping upward and so right. we kept an eye on it that way and when it went kind of wild then we did uh, some some stuff on it uh, you know, that was like prior, you know, so I had a cousin that passed away. So prior, so I have my son and prior to having my son, that's when I researched the whole blood cord thing. Oh and I called my mom and I said, should I save his blood cord? I've done the research in case Sean yeah, or I get cancer. Yeah. And he, she said, absolutely. So I, I knew because, you know, I didn't know how my dad got his brain tumor. And, you know, my grandfather died of melanoma. Oh, wow. So I had already had mm. breast cancer. And so... Um, well, a melanoma you know, is a skin cancer. Yes. Yeah. So years later, uh, you know, my dad had been a... Um, he had been a dentist tech in the uh, Coast Guard. And that's, you know, this was before the protection when they had the x-rays. Oh. So that's how he got his brain tumor. Wow. Wow. But, you know, when having my son, I didn't know that. And I just wanted to make sure that if something happened, we had, you know, his blood cord just in case. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But anyway, so uh, answering your question, make it simple, Tony. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm uh, my doctor. I said, am I is this is this what's going to kill me? And he said, no, he said, it's no. just going to be annoying. That's all, oh, you know. Uh, so, you know, I mean, what is it? You know, I, as I said before, the reason I have it, the main reason I have it is because I'm 80 years old. That, yeah. That's the re main reason I have it. Uh, I didn't have it when I was younger, but it's because I reached 80. Hey, I reached fucking 80. Exactly. So what am I griping about, you know? Yep. I'm seeing all these other people uh, around <laughs> me dying or getting strokes or whatever, and, uh, you know, the worst thing I've got is a little touch of the cancer. You know? Right. So, well, wait. Why is it I mean, I could hear, I could hear, I could hear from the doctor, oh, no, it's spread and you're going to die in 10 months. You know, that I could get that, but I doubt it. You know, you know what? Why is it that when you're older, it's, it slows down, but when you're younger, the prostate cancer is more um it's worse because it's not expect you it, when you're when you become 80 your chances of having prostate cancer is something like 70 percent when you're in your 60s it's like much lower than that but so but when, so, when so, so when they get it it's more aggressive yeah okay yeah mm. like phil when he got it it was more aggressive mm. You know, I mean, I have one little of, of the cores that they took out. One of the cores was kind of aggressive, or two of the cores. One of the cores was aggressive. The other core was had the same aggression, but it was like 15 percent instead of right. instead of 45 percent. So, uh, uh, the chances are that you know, the chances are I don't have a you know a, a bad deal here. Just hey, we'll give get some seeds in you, and you go home, and you get on with your life. You know, and hopefully and I won't Marjorie, have to take. Marjorie is a hundred percent healthy. Uh, no. Ah. <laughs> no. no. No, I mean she doesn't have cancer. She's all good. Well, she, I mean, maybe we don't, we don't pains, know. We don't but... know if she doesn't have cancer. Thank you. Uh, uh, no, because uh, she they they did a uh, CT scan on her spine, and then they shot that her lung, and they found a little spot on her lung. Now it could be anything. Right. You know, because the doctor looked at it, just said, you got a spot on your lung. He doesn't right. know from this kind of stuff. So she's going to go to another doctor to take a look at it, you know. Mm -hmm. But chances are she's fine, you know. Yeah. You know. Uh, she, but she, she has all the, I mean, I'm so happy that I have cancer. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Because 
for years she's been trumping me with her illnesses. You know, she's had the bad back, she's had the bad spine, she's had the bad this, she's had the bad that, and now whatever. Hey, babe, I, I, I have the big C. You know, I got, I have cancer. I uh, take out the garbage. I'm sorry, I can't. I have cancer. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Who's working their ass off every day? She is, but she doesn't have cancer. That's why. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank God. Shoots and ladders. Life is all about shoots and ladders. Listen, you have no idea how much I appreciate her working. You know, and yeah. I wish I could. I wish I. I feel. I guess the thing I feel worse about in my life is that I can't uh, contribute to the family welfare. You know, at this point. And up until I left Sirius, you know, I was making good bucks. You know, I had money coming in. I was taking care of us and her. I mean, she, I was taking care of us, and she was just taking care of her, you know. Uh, but um, it, it's, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I appreciate it. I really do. If you're listening, darling, you know. Yeah. We have a, we have a new term between us to make other people feel uncomfortable, like you and I yes. and Schmoody. And it's simply... <laughs> Honey, you know, the word honey. And the reason yes. is, is the other day I called up and mm. and I needed honey for tea because I had laryngitis and I wanted to have honey for the tea. And I called her up at the office and I said, where's my honey? And she Aww. says, I'm, she says, I'm right here. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. And so since then, she, we, she, whenever we talk to each other, am I your honey? Yes, you my yes. honey. You know, so we're doing, we've got the, the equivalent of schmoody going. Exactly. You know. It's the way it should be. And then when we're in public, what we like to do is two old people start tongue kissing. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw the, I saw your show when she was getting ready to leave. You know, she was going to go to bed. Man, yeah. I was dying. Yeah, yeah. How was your mother's funeral, by the way? I mean, I hate to ask that because it's not like, well, oh, no, well, it was really so, great. The, the, you know, the, the, the funniest uh, part. The pastries so were nice. Luckily, I knew mother my mom, we all knew my mom was going to die. So we had a whole month to apologize for our, our assholeries to say, this is what I want to do with this. I mean, I mean, at one point I told, I'm crying and I go, I told my mom, I can't do an open coffin funeral. No way. And she goes, well, my mother looked so beautiful. I go, I would know I was in the back row. I uh, mean, it, and we're it, dying laughing. So we get to her memorial service and it was sweet because my, all my cousins flew in my nieces and nephews. So we're sitting there and I look at, cause she was cremated and on the urn, it says, Joanne Parkin and Spookers forever. And I said, fuck yes. My mom had her ashes mixed with their cat. Oh, wow. And so when my dad passes away, his ashes are going to get mixed with my mom and Spookers. Oh, what is this? A Hall is this a Halstead cocktail? Totally. <laughs> And you know what? And my my brother Mike, Mr. ILM, he spoke. My aunt spoke. My uncle spoke, and I spoke. What's his title? By the way, my, yeah. what? What's his title at ILM now? He's probably CGI supervisor. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Go. So um, and we all spoke. Then we went to my cousin's house for a big wake, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to my mom's passing, I told her I said. When you cross over, you need to let me know you're okay, or I'm I'm not going to be able to handle this. And so the first night, I you know I for the most part I don't dream. Mm -hmm. I'm a comatose sleeper. And so the second night, she came to me. Her hair was cut. She was happy. She said I'm okay. She gave me a hug. She was knitting. And after that, I was on cloud nine because I know she's okay. Yeah. When uh, you you you, 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 dream, you don't dream you don't dream but you do have you do have nightmares because when you were uh, sleeping with me you would get up in the middle of the night see who you were sleeping with and then scream. So Very uh, funny. Yes. <laughs> never. <laughs> story. Nice try. <laughs> uh, yeah. She snored by the way. She snored really bad. She was 
she was disgusting. You know, I did oh. dream too of my father. I think I'm, I don't know if I told you that, Alex. You did. I, I did. I don't know if I did. I tell you. No. Oh, uh, yeah. you know what happened is my sister didn't dream. She says it was a couple of weeks after downstairs. I found old photos that he must. I was in the bin getting stuff out, and I found a box of old photos from his mother. In big box, and I opened it up. There were old photos from Brooklyn, like they were in the forties and fifties. So I brought them up for my mother. I says, "Ma, I found all these old photos." So she's like, "Wow, I'm going to scan them into the computer and save them." Mm -hmm. So okay. So that night, I I don't know if it was that night. Maybe it was a week or two later. I went to sleep, and I was when you come into the house downstairs in the basement is where my comics are. The basement to redone. So mm -hmm. the photos were in the front where I work scanning stuff. And when I dreamed, I came in the side door with the dog. I let the door go upstairs into the to the apartment, and the light was on going downstairs. So I said, oh, the light's on. Maybe I left it on. So I walked down the stairs, and I opened the door, and then where, where my work desk is, where I scan stuff, and I see somebody there looking through photos, and he turns around, and it was my dad, and he was happy, like, and he kind of waved me over. And when I walked over, he had photos on the desk, and then I woke up. I told my sister she broke down crying. Yeah, well, they, I mean, they, that they, yeah, emotion. yeah, that happens. I never, um, I never had that with my father uh, when he died. Uh, when he died, uh, I was told by by Ronnie that I did cry in my sleep that night. You did. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you were close to your dad, Alex. Too. Yeah. yeah, but that I never. I it didn't really hit me that my father <laughs> was dead. And this happens to a lot of people. About a year mm -hmm. later, it hit me like a bolt of lightning because oh, yeah. all of a sudden he said. I said to myself, "Oh, this is great! I got to tell my father about this." Yep. Oh wow! Yeah. And then I realized, of course, that I couldn't. And then I had a major crisis for a while. Mm -hmm. You were and depressed, I, though. So no. Huh? When you depressed, you remember me asking? You oh, were just, yeah, just I was, sad. I was, yeah, I was depressed. I mean, you know, yeah, I loved him. When my mother went, it was like, well, to begin with, she was a hundred, so she was only oh, taking. Yeah. At that point, she was taking up parking spaces. You know, <laughs> it's still hard. Enough. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, you know what? When my mom started going downhill and Alex, you were talking about ending your show, I thought, shit. You know what? I need to get a hold of Alex, ask him if he doesn't mind me being on his show. And really, it was a godsend because not only were you there for me, but Tony was there for me. Because oh, lucky, lucky, lucky inside. you. Lucky you. Oh, no. Wait till really? wait till he starts start sending wait till you, wait till he starts sending you pictures of Scooby Doo and the Flintstones and you'll be yeah, right. you'll want to kill I, I him. Go no, yeah, you're right. because that is totally up our alley. Well, I have no, made no. him. I have I am at, uh, I've literally banned him from my Facebook uh, messaging. He did. Really? Yeah. Hmm? I did He's send you really a nice message. I don't know if you read it or not. Tony well, I don't really know if it got to person. me. I think you're blocked. I oh, think I, I, I actually, nice actually I think I unblocked you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know what it was? Her mom was going through the hospice, yeah. and I kind of yeah. went through it, and it is really hard. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. not easy. It's not easy. You know, Alex, there was a point where I couldn't believe I was saying this. I was, I actually, quite, you know, when you start questioning out loud, I said, listen, I don't know if there's a guard or not. I said, if there is, can you please just take him already? I mean, yeah. I felt bad even saying that. Exactly. Because I was like, I couldn't, I mean, I was like, you know, am I being selfish? My brother well, Mike was with my mom when she passed, and I said, shit, dude, there's no way. Because when I was with my mom, like, four days before, I was holding her hand, just sobbing, and when she, her breathing would get funky, yeah. I was bumping the bed. Yeah, I was bad. Yeah. I, was, I couldn't well, even maybe we, I shouldn't, even maybe we shouldn't talk about this. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I don't it's bringing back. To it's it. bringing back. Uh, yeah, she's reliving yeah. me now. Yeah, it's hard. I don't mean to get you upset. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. We're we're here with you. We're here. Yeah. It's good to cry. I mean, it is. I don't. I can hold it in pretty good. But if I let it out, forget I'll tell you what I told Tony when his uh, aunt died. <laughs> make you feel better. He phoned. He phoned up. He phoned up. And he said, "My aunt just died." And I said, <laughs> yeah. I, had my I and I said to him, "You see, I have this friend, Penn Gillette, who years ago, when I break up with a girlfriend, would go, well, I never liked her anyway. 
you know. <laughs> and I go, but you hardly even knew her. And he said, no, I just say that to everybody when they leave their girlfriend because nobody wants me to say, hey, how could you leave somebody so sexy like that and so wonderful as that woman? No, they want to hear, you know. So he calls me up and he says, my aunt died and I, in my comedic moment, just <laughs> absolutely just spit out without thinking about it. Well, I never liked her anyway. <laughs> and he started and tell what happened. He started crying. I did. And this is yeah, on, this really is dead. this <laughs> is over at Sirius XM, you know. And the last thing you ever want to have happen with a caller is for you to make them cry because you look like the bad guy, like the worst <laughs> guy in the universe, okay? I, I know what it was. I think it was the moment, and she was oh, my yeah. godmother, and, so she would and, spoil me. And, yeah. And I had my clothes on the bed, and I was like, well, oh, God, I just looked at something. I wasn't going to stupid. Wait a minute. I couldn't, I couldn't even <laughs> make up for it because he cried so badly he hung up. So yeah, I, I, could, was really bad. I couldn't say, come on, Tony. We, you know, I was only kidding. She was probably a wonderful person. Get over it. Everybody's I couldn't give him the pep. You're going to hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put a good word in for him, so he, he'll be all right. Yeah. Have... No, I remember going well, to Vegas. Remember, Alex? We went to Vegas, and we yeah. had lunch with Penn Jillette. Yeah. And the whole I was, time he was, I was talking about himself and his fuck swing and this and that, I was ignoring him. Well, no, here's the thing. It was the one the time I got finally got mad at Penn uh, and, and really stopped talking to him because he recognized everybody at that table who was a man, but he wouldn't recognize you. It was like you well, weren't there. Well, you know there. what? I just ignored him, and then you told me after that he would always say, hey, Alex, how are you doing? Hey, how's your friend Kathleen? Because the whole time I just ignored him and looked yeah, off yeah, and yeah, but, everybody but, else. But I was mad because, you know, hey, you were my girlfriend and I have a right. little have a little respect for my girlfriend, you know. But instead, it was like you almost weren't there. I was you know? not impressed by him at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he'd like <laughs> he'd, he'd like to think you were, you know, but oh. uh, Yeah, well, she really wanted me. No, I he didn't ever say no. that. No. <laughs> Wrong. Yeah, but uh, I, you know, I, you know, I. Um, um, it's, it's people stardom didn't impress me. I was with you because you were Bennett Gordon Schwarzman. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were, and you were very protective of that, by the way. Very. Yeah. And you know, to this day, I still am. Well, you know what I always would do if I met a woman and I went out with her and I even liked her and I we dated and whatever. And then I heard anything about the fact that she was bragging to her friends about who she was going out with. That was it. We right. were finished. You know, I had a girlfriend I went with for eleven years. I eventually found out she was doing that with her uh, her hairdresser, saying, "Oh yeah, I'm going out with Alex Bennett." You know, and I went, I didn't expect that out of her, and that kind of really kind of made breaking up with her a lot easier. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Whatever happened to Violin Girl? Because remember, what, oh, remember you and I used to eat fast. And she was, the bless her heart, she was the slowest <clears throat> eater. Ever. Yes. <laughs> but just the sweetest person. Well, she was a violinist. You know. Yes. And she, I, uh, you know. I think the world of her. She's. I still am in communication yes, with she her. She was the nicest person. Yeah, yeah. She was probably the nicest ex -girl girlfriend of yours I ever met. Uh, Michelle I, and all the rest I, of them, I, I was like, eh, I don't like you. I didn't like Michelle because of the whole Chuck Barnum thing. Oh, that that thing. Oh well, you, the, the, we don't even want to get into that here. But no, uh, that was another story. No, because I went to your apartment to pick up. You know, the screwskin scrumming things I built? Yeah. I'm in there, and I'm getting ready to pack this stuff up, and she's in there, and all of a sudden I stand up all six foot of me, and I look down at her, and I point at her, and I said, you can have those two. The rest of those are mine. And I think she ended up calling you. Yeah, she's going to kick my ass. I don't know, but I was like, ugh. Yeah. You little yeah. Fool. Yeah. She was insignificant in my life, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, 
So, so uh, you, you know, I, I was always very protective about myself that way. Yes. You know, and that's why I liked you. So I never felt that you were going with me because I was Alex Bennett. Oh. Which, by the way, uh, in case you're not aware, um, uh, Charlie, uh, I used to be a big shot. <laughs> I know you used to be a big shot. Yeah. I've been watching you or listening to you for, what, 12 years now. Yeah, but you, you were hearing me at Sirius XM. By then, I was washed up, you know. I mean, so yeah, but I, I Googled you and everything. I knew. In San Francisco, I was a fucking star. Totally. Yeah. But. When I gave you that stained glass window, I went to your studio yes. and I give you the window and all of a sudden you make me sit. I'm I'm between Bobby Slayton and Bob Rubin and I'm like, uh, and Slayton says, sit, babe. And I was like, holy shit, this cannot be happening. So blah, 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 the rest of the show. And then years later, what happens? My BFF, Alex Bennett. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, what uh, um, um, you know, I mean, it, it just was, um, I, I was. It was meant to be. Yeah. I mean, um, we, we had a good time together, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, um, of course, I get this, yeah, sometimes I get this, oops, wait a minute, what's this? Oh, heck. It's oh, the professional. No, I don't want that. That started, <laughs> it just started up. This is a show that Marjorie's been watching, like, for the last five years. And I download them for her so she can watch them. Called Master Chef the Professionals out of England. Nice. Out of England. And, it, and it's like it's like uh, it goes on for I don't know eighteen episodes or something, three days a week towards the end of the year. And they they get all these professional chefs and they all fight for a spot to be the number one Master Chef professional. Well, and, and she Chef sits, Tony's gonna win. She sits sits there watching every every one of these damn things, uh, you know, uh, like crazy. And and so and oh, and then she's got another thing she watches. Have you seen this at all, uh, Charlie? It's on uh, it's on Netflix. It's called Grand Designs, in which people are building these interesting homes, and they follow them. Every, an episode they follow them. In doing this whole thing, and half the time they can't even afford to finish the fucking thing. I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it, and she is just hooked on that show. She just loves that show. And then, I can't wait till in February. It's like some Lego show where these Lego professionals have to build these elaborate Lego sets. Oh, you really okay, have a lot. I'm a nerd. You have a Thank lot of fucking time on your hands. <laughs> Well, I won't be able to watch it, but you know what? I'll record it. I'll tell you something. I was never a Lego person, but the reason I wasn't a Lego person was because Legos were invented way after I was a kid. Okay? Yeah. That shows you how fucking old I am, folks. Okay? You know what? I bought, you know, like you the whole Pirates of the Caribbean thing, so I buy the, um, the Black Pearl... For ninety nine bucks, and then two years later, I sell it for nine hundred. I mean, Legos appreciate better than people. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me. But so, what did I have when I was a kid? I had Lincoln Logs. Oh my yeah. God. Those are those. Twice. Yeah, I like. Wasn't Lincoln. thrilled. Got that for Christmas. And so I, 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 I but t then I there was another thing called Tinker Toys. Yes, yeah. I had that yeah. too. Yeah, Tinker the things toys. In. yeah, yeah they, you, they, they, they had like the circle, stuff. and you would put stuff yes, in them, and yes. yeah. My How mother got an erector set. An erector set, I love. Yeah. But I, in those days, as a kid, it was very dangerous because you cut yourself on them. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the good old days. We had the knockers, the glass knockers. Well, you had knockers. What about, about, uh, did you get Light Bright? I remember that was a good game. Yes, Light Bright was the I used to be ball. obsessed with that. I can sit there for yes. hours. No, but, but anyway. Plug anyway. that in and that would be it for me. Anyway, I uh, I, I loved them. Um, um, but the uh, rector said I loved, but I mean, I used to cut yeah. my hands and everything. But you would build, these are metal girders, folks. Yes. And you would screw them yeah. together with screws. Yes. And they'd give you a little wrench. They were you know, the best, and you could make stuff out of them. You could, and then they came out with motors that you could, yes, attach to them and make, yep. you know, uh, uh, things spin and so on and so forth. Yeah, 
Yeah, those oh, were the good son. old days. Those were the days of toys that could kill you. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, the glass knockers, you'd go knock, 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 and then you'd do the butterfly, and they'd shatter, and all the glass <laughs> all would over in your place. eyes. Did you ever do this? Alex? Again, you had to bring up knockers. Did you shake the box? Everybody, what? Like I would oh, shake Lord. the box. I used to get mad when they got me close. Oh. I would shake the box, and she didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> She's like, I got to get you something. You got to go to school. Oh, come on. Yeah. Just get me toys. Man. So what when, you- my son, when my son was younger, I got him these, my brother, Mike, got him these magnet blocks. So they're these different shape and they're really flat. And so Sean would build these elaborate houses and then he'd watch um, Beavis and Butthead and he'd get his Lego <laughs> figures and he'd build the whole interior of the house. And then as he's watching the show, he would reenact everything they were doing. So I, I was watching the worst TV show ever. It was this thing they were doing today on the, uh, 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 on the FBI and their investigation into Trump. Did you see any of that, Charlie? No. You're lucky. It was so <laughs> fucking boring, I couldn't believe it. And you know what makes it so boring? Is that you know exactly what everybody's going to say and what uh. position they're going to take. It's, it's ridiculous. It's just amazingly bad. The reason I'm saying that is we're down to a low amount of people here. And I think it's because we're not talking politics tonight. Mm. There's a reason why we're not talking politics, folks. We're fucking sick of it. Yes. You know? I can't even get myself into it. I turn on mm. MSNBC and I go, eh. You know. No, you I know, know what was I like know what they're gonna ooh, say. Clinton got impeached for an affair. Ooh. Well, I like that one because at least there were blowjobs involved in it. You know, there's no blowjobs involved in this. Lots and you of know, Saturday Night Live here. had a heyday like they're having a heyday now. I mean, Kate McKinnon doing Giuliani is effing hilarious. <laughs> She's <laughs> doing the most speaker. Yeah. She's but, funny. But, I mean, I just, you know, I mean, I, uh, um, uh, I uh, with Clinton, I was just, uh, uh, I, uh, I hated him. Uh, during that whole thing, not for the reasons you think. I hated right. him because he was fucking getting a blowjob, yeah. you know. <laughs> and and everybody's making like this is a bad deal, and I'm going, you know, the only thing the pre- he should have done was go around high fiving. Yeah. Well, you know what? Remember, um, God, what was that? Dirty rotten scoundrels to have an affair as French to get caught is American. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing okay. is, the thing is that that uh, and, and and she's quite right. Um, Monica Lewinsky, who um, became the butt of jokes, has done a lot of things about being the butt of jokes. That I mean, her entire life was ruined just yes. by people and their jokes and their attitudes yep. about her, and right. that that she never really had a chance to prove who she was. You know, exactly. and, and she's a very intelligent, accomplished yep. woman. Uh, I agree. Good... I saw the whole documentary, and yeah. I thought, you know what? Fuck you guys. Yeah. I mean, she was a kid. Yeah, and and quite frankly, I understand, you know, why she gave the president a blowjob. She was, yes. she Where was, yeah. she was infatuated by him. Yes. And she wanted to do anything. He took advantage. No, he didn't take advantage. I think they were both yes. taking advantage of each other. Probably. Okay. Would you agree with that, Charlie? I don't yeah. think it was a case of him taking advantage of her. Uh-huh. I'm sure if she said no, he wouldn't have done anything. She, in exactly. fact, she in fact seduced him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were probably both outlets for each other. Yeah. Uh, oh, Tony stuffing his mom. <laughs> I compared that. If I had a chance to get with Jane Fonda when I was younger, I would have done it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, why'd you bring up Jane Fonda? Oh, I don't know. I've always loved that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I see. Was, it's I, the leggings. It's funny. I was watching her last night in uh, Barbarella. Because yeah, I did, and I just watched the opening with her floating around and taking her clothes off doing a strip. And I suddenly was uh, uh, amazed at how small her tits were. 
Well, back then, she, yeah. She ha- uh, did she have a job? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, okay. Because they were they were not big. They were. No, oh, I loved them anyway. Boy, when that nude scene in Barbarella. Yeah, yeah. What's our church? Oh, I never heard Oh, somebody heard us talking. Was that his mother? <laughs> I think so. That, that sounds like psycho. I'm going to start singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> maybe maybe that maybe that was over a speaker or something. You know, a little baby monitor thing. Oh, it could be. He might have that to, yeah. to check on her. Yeah. Was that a baby monitor that we heard her on? <laughs> Who was that? We just heard somebody talking. Oh, that was my sister calling me. I, you want, she okay. wants me to buy something for my niece, so I'm going to order it for her later. Okay. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. She's like, do you realize it's 1130? I said, I know. I have work tomorrow. I said, so oh. do I. <laughs> he thought so, it was your mom. <laughs> she's Tony, she's, yeah. uh, boy, yeah. we're, we're down to 19 people. Fuck you. <laughs> Why I should I be doing this? I woke her up, I think. Why should I be doing this? I mean, uh, uh, nobody, er, everybody got the idea that Alex isn't on tonight. Well, yeah. check. Yeah, yeah, totally. You put it on your Facebook I'm, page, I'm, sorry. I'm getting to the point yeah. where, what? I saw it. I, put I on, can I, read. Tony can read. Charlie yeah. can read. Yeah. I even checked last night. I didn't see a message from you last night, but I checked. Yeah. I saw the piece of shit thing that said no ramble tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I, the reason I decided not to do the ramble, ramble last night is I figured it'd be like tonight. Nobody would, right. you know. Yeah. And no. uh, I decided I would do it tonight because maybe everybody was waiting for me. But apparently, that's not the case. They're not even listening. Ew. Not even fucking listening. <laughs> you know, boy, are they going to be surprised when they check the uh, YouTube channel tomorrow and they yeah. see there was a show. Yeah, you know, but It'll be a, what the hell? Yeah, I uh, uh, Jane Fonda I thought was kind of hot, you know. Um, but I uh, I you know something I found Monica Lewinsky. She looked hot. like Henry Fonda with leggings on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but she looks just like her dad. Like Peter him. looked nothing like him. I uh, never thought of Henry Fonda when I was looking at Jane. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but now anyway, you will. <laughs> Anyway, I, uh, um, uh, I, I, I was hot for Monica Lewinsky. Because, yeah. Well, yeah, because she was the kind of girl that in high school would have fucked me. Okay? When none of the That's other girl, right. when none of, no, when none of the other girls would. You know? And that's what I liked about her. She seemed like, you know, she, she had enough of a, a, a lack of self um, <laughs> that steam? self esteem that she wouldn't have sex with me okay you know well you know it's funny my son and I watch live PD and there's this guy Sean Sticks Larkin mm-hmm. and my son looks at him and goes holy crap he looks like Clint and I go dude you are totally right now the guy's growing a beard and I'm like dude don't do it. You still look like Bill. <laughs> Bill with a beard. You know, um, yes. well, uh, Bill didn't need a beard. No, nope, that's a, it's a joke, but it's a very... Just like Clinton. Anyway, I, I you know, I, so I always liked my... I always thought my Alec Lewinsky was kind of, you know, accessible. You know? And that's You're why... You're funny. Wear this beret. Yeah. And then I kind of I kind of liked her. I mean, I, I thought, yeah. as the years have gone on, I have a great deal of respect for the woman. You know? Um, well, you know what? You, all your girlfriends, you wanted to save. You wanted to be the knight in shining armor. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Maybe. Yes. Well, well, I wasn't saving you from anything. No, because I could, I mean, I had my shit together. Yeah. Well, and you know, um, um, she, um, when, uh, Monica Lewinsky had a certain something in which I felt that there was a certain vulnerability there, and I like that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought uh, he was very lucky. 
You know what? I felt bad for her, and then her mom. Because and quite dad, frankly, if I had to, if I, if I had to fuck Hillary every night, I would go insane. <laughs> no wonder. Hillary was pretty no. cute when she was young. Huh? Hillary was very cute when she was young. She never had a cute day in her fucking life. But you know what? They were strictly a political couple. That, yeah. you, what it was is they were they were a political. Um, you're right. They were they were political junkies, and they they so they suited each other. You know. Yeah. It was terrific. You know. So. Well, yeah, but you know what? They'll both enjoy each other in hell. By the way, to the rest of our audience, uh, you've just got 20 minutes left to make this a full house. <laughs> <laughs> so like we're not touching this with a 10 foot pole yeah yeah but uh um uh, you know i mean uh it it it's uh, uh fine uh, i the only thing is i'm facing with this uh, whole prostate thing the possibility of never being able to get an erection again uh which i don't know if that's bad news because i'm nine i'm 80 i made it to 80 you know Still getting erections, but it's true. Some uh, of the people eighty aren't even walking. The, well, I mean, you know, but the, the, now they're going to give me medicine and stuff that's probably going to deprive me of all of this, the radiation, whatever, you know. But that should wear so off. What's enough. more important, no. an erection or life? Well, uh, an erection. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A apparently, apparently, Kathleen, you're not a guy. <laughs> and you don't have any idea about this. We'd rather be dead than not get an erection. I can get both. I mean, I can get <laughs> him or her. So it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's amazing how you, you go through life. You would, you would just think if there was a God, they would, God would just, at the end of your life, give you little bonuses. You know, give you a little, hey, give you stuff. And instead of God, my you, son wanted to know because mm -hmm. he despises Christmas. Yeah. Can Gentiles celebrate Hanukkah? Yes. Yes. Thank Just you. Just like Jews can celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's going to make him happy. And I'll tell you, there isn't a Jew alive that doesn't resent the fact that he didn't have Christmas. You know. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know what? The reason we don't, you know, ha have much to do with his father is that he's an anti semite. Oh my God. Oh, really? And both my son and I have huge issues with that. With your, with your, the father of your with child? Simone. Yep. Mm. And my, my son is actually very, he's furious because I, he goes, you know, why did dad disappear? I go, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you something. I said, you know, he's an anti-Semite. And so I explained the whole thing because most of my friends are Jewish. And my son was horrified. And he said, you know what? F my dad. If that's the way he's going to be, then you know what? I want nothing to do with did, him. Did you, did, did you wind up, um, you didn't mar never married him? Nope. Uh, but did you wind up going with him because there was something you well, liked about him? Well, he was my bodybuilding partner. For four years. So mm -hmm. what happened is then, you know, he and I used to hang out. And then um, we started bodybuilding together. And then he moved to Mexico. And we didn't get involved until he moved to Mexico. And then we had Sean. And everything was Wait, wait a minute. You didn't get involved till he get, went to Mexico? Boy, he must have had a large penis. That <laughs> went over the border no, and I mean, up the coast. And... I mean, we had feelings for each other. So I used to go down there. And then we had Sean, and then about, it was probably maybe six years later, when he'd come up here, he'd make all these comments. He never, he never made them before that? Nope. Wow. Because and he also had issues with his Mexican folks down in Mexico. Wow. But when he came up here and he started spewing all his stuff, especially with Hollywood and stuff, it was so stereotypical. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I you know, my I uh, are coming across the street to give me. Some I, I tell I, te I, I tell the story about this woman I dated uh, was dating and we took her out to dinner and um, uh, we were going to we're getting in the car, go back to my place. 
And uh, I'd never had sex with her up to this point, but I knew this was going to be a sure thing tonight, okay? Right. As we're driving down the Bowery, which is one of the worst parts at that time in New York, uh, she's saying uh, to me, you know, uh, I'll tell you, if I, I, I just don't know what's up with these niggers. Oh, wow. And then she starts spouting a diatribe about black people using the N-word, excuse me, <coughs> right, Charlie, okay. but it was important for me to use that word in this context. Yeah. Oh, I and and um, uh, she kept going and she kept going. She kept going. I'm at a stoplight in the Bowery. And I reach across, open the door and say, get the fuck out. As exactly. some guys are trying to clean and wash my windows. Mm. Okay. She's in the middle of the Bowery with all these bums, and I just took off and left her there. I, and I, I think I said something about never talk about people that way again. Right. You know. And that was one of the few nights in my life I was proud of myself. I had given up oh, a sure shit. thing, and Charlie knows as a guy what a sure thing means to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I I didn't, you know, so, you know, I don't understand. I guess he just never appeared to be anti-Semitic until after you had Sean. Yes. I mean, my family, we're, I'm half English, probably a quarter Portuguese and a quarter Italian. Mm -hmm. So we have Halsteads, Vargas, and Castelluccio. Mm -hmm. So... so I mean, when he came over here and all of a sudden, you know, six years later, he's spewing all this stuff. I remember my neighbor came from across the street and he gave me a bunch of fruit and I was almost in tears. And I love my neighbor, Jim. And he goes, what's going on? I said, you know, Simone won't stop. He's going on about the Jews here and there. And he goes, his name's Simone. I go, right, Shimon. And I said, this will be the last year. And after that, he was never, I never allowed him over again. And so mm. he called Sean for his birthday and he's talking about coming up to Sacramento for Christmas. Yeah. And I just told Sean, I want nothing to do with him. And Sean goes, I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, it's a question of what do you do in a situation like that? The problem here that you have <laughs> is that he is, of course, Sean's father. Yes. You know? And yet, you don't want to be around him because of his anti-Semite uh, leaning. And you know what? Neither does Sean. Because Sean's second mom, my best friend, mm -hmm. is Jewish. So this year, I mean, I already have my menorah. She goes, girl, let's celebrate Hanukkah. And Sean goes, because Sean hates Christmas because the whole thing's a lie. Yeah. And I said, would you? And my son goes, yes. And so she goes, okay. I'm coming over December 22nd. It's going to be a big deal. And I go, Sean, are you good? And Sean's in heaven. Yes. Yeah. But Sean wanted to know. He said, you know, ask Alex if it is okay for us to celebrate. And I go, okay, I will. Oh, you know, it's, it's fine. It's fine if you want to celebrate. Yep. I don't know why, but uh, go right ahead, you know. Um <laughs> You know, it's a, it's, it's a celebration based on another myth. You know? Well, of course, the Maccabees, Judas Maccabees. Well, well, no, no, this, it, was, it, was about, it was about that there was, uh, there were, uh, um, uh, there was only enough, li uh, enough oil to keep for the lamps day, lit for one day. But it lasted mm -hmm. eight days. It, it lasted eight days. Yes. And that's because they were cheap, and they would <laughs> let out Turn the on. oil. That's and, come on. But it's another myth, you know, yeah. but we are led to believe it, and uh, we have our tradition in that. It's a nice little holiday, you know. Yes. It's you not know, it's funny, religion, is, is it there just to give us, now with everybody passing, is it there just to give us hope, you think, Alex? No, it's there to like make, it's else. there to give professions to these people who have nothing to do with their lives. Uh, no, you know, Tony, what, what, you what, need to tell them what you said to the nuns. It, no, but, but oh, how this. they all dress the same. <laughs> I used to always get in trouble. My mother's like, shut up. After you make communion, confirmation, you don't have to come. I mean, I, I, I used to laugh in their face. 
I said, you all, what's so funny? Because they were there. I says, well, you all dressed the same. I was being a wise ass. Well, so I knew what I was saying. Yeah. Do they go quack, says, quack? He's a smarty pants. My mother used to pull my hair. Like my, my mother used to pull my little hair. Charlie, you know that little hair that hurts? Little yeah, hair that hurts? Keep it up. You're going to get it when I get home. Just shut up and sit down. You fall over yourself over your leg. She knows he's being a wise guy. Yep. I mean, I was always exposed to like both cultures. I always found it fascinating, like you said, like how they always have these crazy stories. And how can they really know if it's accurate? And one time exactly. I said that in religious instructions, she got mad. She's like, are you questioning us? It was almost like... Prove no, to me that Christ ever kind of, prove, prove to, really me, prove to me that Christ ever existed, or that I mean, Christ, or, or the Christ was in five different guys. You know, the, the yeah. Christ who was born in Bethlehem was not the Christ that died on the cross. That they were two entirely separate oh, incidences okay. that, for the sake of mythology, were brought together as one story. You know, I swear, um, me going to Bible study and I don't go anymore, and they're probably like. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you know what? I got I got I got to tell you something. Which is Joshua. I got to tell you something. You know what? I got to in, uh, in ancient yeah. archaeology, they're finding headstones that that thank that thank Yahweh and his Asherah. Yeah, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I there's one thing that, you know, that I I uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, uh that uh, there were there were always things that bothered me about religion you know, right. in general. But the thing that always bothered me about, uh, let's see, about uh, Christ was mm. just the mythology that, uh, of the whole thing is a mythology. Do we know that there was a Christ who really died back in that time? Exactly. Or was it, you know, to begin with, the, the story of Jesus, as we know it, wasn't codified till 80 years later. Right. Yeah. And so what went on before? What were what mm -hmm. myth were they trying to preserve? Right. You know. Yeah, and that's so, a good point. What was yeah. yeah, and so whatever they wrote down might have well been a lie or an extension of the truth. Right. And that there might have not exactly. been anybody sure. such as uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have no proof of it. Nope. You it know what I do believe in? Man. What Over the summer, I read uh, Flavius Josephus. So I read I the Jewish me. Antiquities, which is basically uh -huh. the it's basically the Old Testament. And my friends were like, what the hell? And then I read Tacitus and I was like, holy shit, this is like a soap opera. Yeah. You know, I had to take notes and say, oh my God, Julius Caesar, that's not his real name. His real name is this. And so my question was in Bible study, I said, you know, how come in the Bible, all the women are whores, sisters or mothers? But if you look at Roman history, Ain't, you know, Greek history and Egyptian history, all the women are very powerful. They're gods. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And they yes, so Tony, like, up, Tony. Up, 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 up. Tony. You know what I do believe? I bought a book. I bought, I, I bought some of the books, you know, they had it on Bill Gates. I'm on Bill Gates' reading list. And he had, he read this, The Search for the Apostles, or the so-called apostles after right. the... I actually, he was believing that there, I do believe this. I think there was a group of Jewish holy men that might have been having different faiths. Right. And and then they spread out. I don't know, like, you're, you're probably right, Alex. It was probably, because they were crucifying people left and right back then. Yes. Weren't they Romans? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, anybody could have been a false god, because if you think about it, I kind of think about it like, let's say you rose up, Alex, and by you the were way, By the way, preacher. do you ever wonder how people hmm. died from crucifixion? That had it. They bled to death, right? No? Asphyxiation. No, that's correct. Really? Did yeah. you that say that? You. Did you say that too, Charlie? It's, uh, yeah, it says suffocate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. asphyxiation. Yeah. What it is, yeah. if you put somebody up on a cross like this, yeah, for uh, something like only three hours, Most their, of their lungs collapse like and Very they rarely did they have crossbars. Yeah, uh, they uh, it, oh. it it and then you you know you of course you're pressure on your hands um your lungs collapse after three yeah. hours mm -hmm. and you can't breathe yep. and that's how you die you, you know what i was thinking because back then when they were killing people let's say you rose up you were a a, a well-read person who a well prophet, other people were gonna, or whatever if you would have rose up against the romans and say hey listen this guy's got a lot of followers we got to get rid of him they're not going to talk to you they're going to probably kill you you know, you know, well, you know, like you know what always got me about the Catholics, Tony. When I was growing up in 
on Telegraph Hill, in North Beach, in San Francisco, the most Italian place on planet Earth at that time. Yeah. Uh, I was always referred to as the dirty Jew in the neighborhood. That had to be mean. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. But the thing was that I always got this. Uh, how come your people killed Christ? Yeah. Uh -oh. You know, and my, I would go ask my father, That's and he'd say, true. well, we didn't kill Christ, but, It you was know. the Romans. It was the Romans. Romans. Yeah. Thank you. You know, we didn't kill Christ. Yeah, the Romans did it. But uh, that, yes. it was always what the Jews said. The Romans did it. But th th there were people who believed that the Jews killed Christ. And, you know, when we go to this whole question of anti-Semitism, the mm. question is, why is it coming back? Exactly. What, I you know, know, what? I mean, Which, I've often said, I've often had a joke about, you know, the, first the, 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 the Romans tried to kill the Jews, and then the so-and-so, the Spaniards tried to kill the Jews, and then the Germans tried to kill the Jews. What are we doing that's pissing them off? You know, I didn't, I couldn't figure that one out. What are we you doing? It is pure ignorance. No, but why, why the Jews? What, what do we have, especially at this know. point in time, you know? What 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 is why is there an anti-Semitism against it? And that anti-Semitism, I hate to say this, Charlie, exists in the black community a lot. Yes. Oh, yeah. My dad was an anti-Semite. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He hated Jews. Did he ever say know. why? Well, because he thought he was being ripped off by the the uh, Jewish guy running the cleaners down the street and the you know. Jewish guy in the restaurant or whatever. You, well, you know what the problem was in a lot of neighborhoods, mm. a lot of neighborhoods in the United States that became uh, black communities. They had previously been Jewish communities. They'd been mm -hmm. Jewish ghettos, okay? And then the Jews somehow rose up and made, started making some money and started getting acquiring things and were able to move out of the, out of the ghetto, all right? Mm. So the blacks moved in. To these ghettos but what was left that was jewish was they still kept their stores yeah right. and so the only contact that these black people had with jews were these shop owners who many times were unscrupulous they would raise the rates on the day the welfare checks came out things like that um and so jews were getting a bad rap for being like those pe those those merchants who remained in the ghetto and that's where I think the anti-Semitism came from with black people. So, you know. And I, I'm sorry I can't make every Jew a good Jew. Hey, you know, we got a minute left? Uh, two minutes left? What is it? Uh, how much wow, time? Some interesting show. How much time do we have left? Yeah, we, I, just, we, I just talked myself into uh, almost running over. Maybe I, should yeah. run, maybe I should run over because uh, uh, J uh, Jack doesn't think we're on tonight. <laughs> and uh, I can prove to him that we are. <laughs> and Phil is probably dancing with the shark. Or oh, he, my God. The shark he, ate him. No, I, no he, him he, he's on a plane back from Maui. Whatever. So, so, he's uh, probably going to land in Arizona, fly to New York, and then go back to San Francisco. Yeah, he's got that whole <laughs> yeah. thing where he wants to get into the, that club or whatever they have oh. at the airport. He's the guy on a fly yeah. on a flight for 20. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. yep. Well, anyway, let me see here. I'll, just, I'll start the theme about 10 seconds early. Yeah. Uh, boy, this has been nice. You know, something, fuck all yeah. of you who didn't call tonight because you didn't think I was going to be on. This is one of the best shows we've done in a long time, and none of you <laughs> were part of it. Okay? Nope. But Charlie was. Mm -hmm. Kathleen was. Better known as Schmoody. I keep telling Marjorie about the Schmoody thing, and and how it just annoyed the shit out of people. And that's why we do it, okay? Yes. Uh, and then, then when she came up with Honey, I said, now we got our own. Yes. You know? And I'm thinking of like, you know, met, letting it metamorphosize to like, a, you know, Honey Bear and Honey Boo Boo. Honey, yeah, Honey Bunny. Uh, yeah, Honey honey Boo Boo. No, I wouldn't want to call yeah, her Honey, honey Boo Boo. Uh, no. No, we couldn't do honey that. Honey Boopy. Honey Boopy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, yeah, just write them down and send them to me. You know, because yeah, know. you're good at that sort of thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, thank you so much, Charlie. Appreciate it, and I appreciate you, Kathleen, for knowing I was on tonight, and Charlie. I mean, and uh, um, uh, Tony. Uh, Tony for not knowing I was on tonight, but calling anyway because he thought I might be. Yeah. Right? 
right? Thank yeah, I, just, I watched your page. I knew you were coming on. I just had to get see? it going. See, a see, see, I'm my see, eye. Jack. He looks at my Facebook page. I do. He reads <laughs> emails, Jack, <laughs> and knows I was going to be on tonight. But it's because on his show last night, he said I wasn't going to be on tonight. That's why nobody called. Okay. All right. It's your fault, Jack. Jack Bishop is next, by the way. Hey, thanks. Thanks Good to night. all of you. I really appreciate it. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye back. There we go. There they go. There goes our uh, our, 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 our uh, um, uh, citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there's going to be one right after me uh, with uh, Jack Bishop and... Oh, wait a minute. Jack Bishop and the... Uh, I, I, I think I heard that Jack Bishop and the uh, intersection aren't going to be on tonight. That's what I think I heard. Anyway, uh, I, I'll see you again <laughs> tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, right after Damian Chaplin does the exchange. And then, uh, let's see, what comes after that? Oh, yeah, me at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And as always, if you see honey, tell her that I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night. <laughs>